I love traveling. I've been to a lot of places all over India and even outside India. And it was so fascinating to know that rain in one part of the world is a result of evaporation of ocean water from some other continent. And then the clouds travel continents before they actually produce the rain. It's not really fair, you know. We spend energy and make an effort to walk. But the water can just evaporate, float and glide as a cloud. Water in water bodies, such as lakes and seas, is in liquid form. If we want to really zoom in and observe the particles, they are eager to turn into gas. They need just two things, heat and access to the surface. Think of the water body like a room full of people. If you announce that the room needed to be emptied, the people closest to the door would leave first. The announcement is like the heat from the sun. The door is like the surface of the water body. There are two ways you can empty the room quickly. You can make an announcement more desperate, frequent and loud. Or you could increase the size of the door. Greater temperature or greater surface area will lead to more evaporation. The water turns into water vapour which is just the same as liquid water but is now in a gaseous state. As the vapour rises, it starts feeling a chill. The higher we go away from the surface of the earth, the cooler the temperature gets and as the temperature lowers, the water vapour starts changing state from a gas back to liquid. The water vapour starts condensing or turning into tiny liquid water droplets. These individual droplets are really very light and stay suspended in the air as a feather stays afloat. When these tiny water droplets gather together due to various geographical and atmospheric conditions, they form the clouds. The individual droplets are very tiny but the clouds they can be as heavy as 100 elephants. The next time you see up at the sky, look for the different shapes the clouds appear in and also look very closely to see the tiny droplets they are made of.